Thank you for joining us on day three of our road trip from Munns Park, Arizona to Glacier National Park. I'd sure appreciate it if you would take a moment to hit that like button here on YouTube. We started this morning in Heber City, Utah and traveled north from there on the scenic US 89. Our plan is to avoid freeways as much as possible, although my route could not avoid them all. Right now we find ourselves on I-80 heading northeast towards Wyoming. This way, while we're still on a freeway, we were able to avoid the traffic that is Salt Lake City. And I-80 through here has some scenic and long curving downgrades to keep life interesting. Once we reached Evanston in Wyoming, we left the interstate and continued our travel again on US 89. You can actually travel the 89 almost from the southern border to the northern border of the country. Founded during the construction of the first transcontinental railroad, the town was named after James A. Evans, who was a civil engineer for the Union Pacific. The railroad arrived in November of 1868 and a saloon and restaurant opened in a tent soon thereafter near what is now Front Street. By December, the rails had reached Evanston, and the first train arrived December 16th. Unfortunately for the town, the railroad soon ordered the end of the line to be moved 12 miles west to Wasatch. Within three days, Evanston started to look like a future ghost town. But as so many things in life, fortunes changed, and in June 1869, Headquarters returned to Evanston and it continued to grow and flourish. As we head north through agricultural lands, some plains and rolling hills, we'll eventually find ourselves back in Utah and actually be on the Oregon Trail. While we're traveling historic routes, how many of you remember this bit of history? About an hour and a half out of Evanston, we're back in Utah driving along Bear Lake. The lake sits mostly in Utah with the northern portion lying in Idaho. Coming from Arizona and living in the desert, we're just not used to seeing so many creeks, rivers, and lakes along a road trip like this. Once we got north of Mount Carmel Junction, which would be the turnoff to Zion National Park, it seemed like we could find water along our entire route. In Arizona, we have dry washes, and all that usually flows in them is sand when the wind is blowing, that is. Bear Lake is 112 square miles in size and 208 feet deep. Originally called Black Bear Lake, it was discovered in 1819 by a trapper. Normally a deep blue-green in color, the lake is home to several small communities with lots to do from fishing to boating to simply lounging on its many beaches. Driving for miles along this lake, yes it's that big, is like being at a seashore. Still on the Oregon Trail, we still play this one on family nights. May all your Ford crossings be safe and the weather smile on you, and may you make it to Oregon alive. We're getting close to home for the night and the next day. Soda Springs got its name for the hundreds of natural springs of carbonated water found in the area. It's also a landmark on the Oregon Trail. The Soda Springs geyser was released in 1934 when the town was looking for hot water for a bathing pool. They drilled into a chamber of highly pressurized carbon dioxide gas and cold water and the result was a brand new geyser. After flooding downtown, it was eventually capped and now a timed valve releases it every hour on the hour as a tourist attraction.
now to our final destination of the day, Lava Hot Springs. The town sits in a mountain valley of the Portland River and on the old route of the Oregon Trail and the California Trail. Tomorrow we'll be in the hot water, uh, and no pun intended, where several pools fed by geothermal hot springs ranging from 102 to 112 degrees. I'll feel so relaxing on my bones after a few days of driving. But for now, time to set up after a long day. Good evening to all, and thanks for watching.